Okay. So, so I'm going to be talking here about fragility and disorder and systems that can handle uh, disorder and other systems that cannot handle disorder. And even there's a class of things that actually benefit from disorder. Um, it's very important for, and I'm, I'm extremely happy to be in Switzerland for many reasons. The first one is that I built my book, the whole notion of a stable system around Switzerland. And Switzerland is really the most stable country in the history of mankind. Why was it so? Because it's a bottom-up system organized in a way uh, that you know, sort of involves everyone. It is a municipal, it's not top-down. It obeys the principle of subsidiarity, which is some kind of decentralization, but not geographic decentralization, decentralization at a level of function as well. And it has good things going for it. So now, of course, we can apply the concept of fragility to countries. Uh, why is Russia vastly more fragile than a place like Italy? Okay, although Italy seems to have political volatility, variability, and Russia has the same person in charge. Why? So you can really decide on country risk. You can also look at size of places. For example, China, to me, is very fragile. Singapore is not. They have the same regime. Why? Scaling, size, centralization. You can look at it this way. You can also look at applying the concept to your portfolio or your selection of companies that are going to be in your portfolio. Your portfolio, I break things into three categories. There's the fragile, there's the robust, there's the anti-fragile. When I was an option trader, if you're long volatility, anything that goes wrong in the world benefits you. If you're short volatility, in other words, you are sold option, the opposite, all right? You don't want the phone to ring in the middle of the night. And if you're in between, you're robust, you really don't care. The idea is that if you shoot for robust, you're never going to get robust. You're going to get fragility, hidden risks somewhere, as UBS and the Swiss Bank discovered from their experience in 2007, 2008. So the idea is uh, your portfolio, how it should be organized, and how the portfolio or the companies you're investing in, or the, the business, you know, the, port the local portfolio of these companies, how it's built. And of course, you know, you, you, uh, you should select companies according to some criteria. Counterintuitively, completely counterintuitively, a company that has very stable earnings from subscriptions is not a company that's good. You see, why? Because if they lose subscriptions, they're out of business. A company that has some volatility of earnings, but yet makes it, is a good company. And things like that. You want three important tips of how portfolio can be fresh? Of course. The first one is apply some measure of risk to your business with the following rule. A very simple rule of thumb. Uh, raise your sales, or right, 10%. Lower your sales 10%. If you lose more than you make, you're in trouble. If you make more than you lose, then you're not fragile. So that's the first rule, the first one. Second one is invest in what I call the class of barbell strategies. What is a barbell strategy? It's a bimodal strategy, where you're investing, instead of investing in medium risk securities, you're investing a large section in high risk securities, and a high, sorry, small section in high risk, and a large section in no risk. So you're very conservative, very, very, very aggressive, but you're not the middle. So if there's a big shock, you're still going to be okay to take over investment from others.